Hello, welcome. Welcome to MSME Matters. We have Bjorn Engelhardt with us. He works for Forcepoint and he is an expert on security. Most of the MSMEs that I have come uh, across, security seems to be the last, uh, the last, last segment. It's like what you see in India. Uh, you have bike drivers wearing a mask but no helmet uh, during COVID. So they think that the mask is important because otherwise COVID could strike. But the fact is there's something else that needs to protect them. The head. I mean, without a head, there is no need for a mask, right? So uh, I'll leave. I'll 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 just leave it there and uh, ask Bjorn what uh, should a typical SMB be doing for cybersecurity now at this moment when even they are faced with COVID-led lockdowns and challenges. Yeah, I, I love the analogy, uh, Raj, and thank you for uh, uh, in inviting me to uh, share some thoughts with your viewers out there and. Uh, uh, I, I do. You know, I, I've lived in several countries, um, Australia, where I'm currently based, and Singapore, uh, where I should be based if it wasn't for COVID, uh, where the SME sector is such an important part, uh, both for, uh, you know, as an employer, but an economic stimulus uh, for the business. Uh, and, and as we were talking before you, uh, you know, we started this, uh, there's sometimes the forgotten uh, sector in the industry. It's kind of assumed that, well, they're just a whole bunch of small people doing business, but we don't always look at the size of it. And I think you shared it's over 40% of the employers and the exports in India, which is significant. And so I think uh, using your analogy of, of the helmet and the mask, uh, a lot of people kind of say, well, I've got security because I've got some antivirus on my desktop or my laptop, and that's what I'm using for. And you think, well, that kind of stops the, the virus, it stops the COVID equivalent to get onto your laptop, but it doesn't actually protect and do much for the, the most important thing in, in any business, whether it's the largest bank or a small organization, is that in business information. Is it your list of your customers? Is it your financials? Is it your secret uh, formulas for how you're managing uh, your, your, what you're selling? You know, is it some of your uh, uh, plans and diagrams on how you run your business? You know, at the end of the day, uh, every business has something secret element in how they run it. And, they, you know, and for some, it is their customers. For others, it's that Coca-Cola formula, even at a micro level around that. And that's the most important thing. And most organizations, smaller organizations, you know, as they say, can't see the forest for the trees. They're kind of lost yeah. in thinking, well, I just need to protect my device because I've been told that for years. They don't think about the information. They don't think about um, you know, where it's being accessed and who has access to it uh, as well. So cyber you know, really impacts a lot of different businesses. And I think just the last point, Raj, before I hand it back to you, yeah, what we've seen is a lot of small organizations supply bigger organizations uh, and ultimately uh, those bigger organizations are becoming more aware of the risks that uh, hey i'm working with a lot of small companies who may not be very secure that's a breach one of the largest breaches we've seen in the world was target over in the us uh, the, the department store millions and millions or hundreds of millions of credit cards were stolen uh, and the turn out the source was a very small air conditioning contractor um, who had an online system where you would log in and just uh, book a, uh, a service. Someone did that, but they also knew that that service could get back into Target again. Uh, and so the smallest organization uh, you know, led to one of the largest breaches in the industry uh, around there. Uh, and so I think as these SMEs are wanting to supply and deal overseas, companies who are buying from them also want to say, well, are you secure if I give you my information? Yeah. I think that's a very good point you brought in because uh, till now, uh, security just meant, like you said, uh, uh, an antivirus running on your laptop, on your phone, uh, maybe a, a firewall around your internet service. That was pretty much it. So today, what is happening is, and most of the uh, this micro, small, and if not the micro, at least the small and medium uh, businesses, they are looking at exports. They are looking at working with larger companies. Uh, for example, you, uh, I'm sure you know about Toyota and Maruti, both of them, Suzuki. Both of them have an ecosystem uh, which they created. Now, a chap who's making door handles for the car, uh, he thinks, oh, security is not important. But again, like you said, there is a secret sauce out there, right? I mean, something which needs to be protected. So how do you see this? I mean, how would you convince 
uh, a small business owner saying, okay, you know what, uh, this is not something, this is not a choice anymore. Mm. You need to have some level of security mm. happening out there. Yeah. You know, and I, I, yeah, it, it's, um, it's a really good discussion topic uh, around that. And if I think if you look at, uh, there's two things. Do people understand the inherent risk? And most people do, I think. Uh, the question is, they say, well, what stops you? Uh, it's like, what, what stops me going and, and losing 10 kg uh, because I've been eating too much during COVID? It's not that I understand, it, it's not that I lack understanding that I uh, need to be fitter and it's bad for my health. It's just hard work. Um, it's too hard work. I have to go out and run and exercise uh, and do all the things that you kind of go, Phew, that's too, too much like hard work. Um, and, and so therefore, I, I, I look at it most and say, well, it's too hard to do this. And therefore, the easy answer is I'll buy some antivirus and that hopefully that's good enough because let, let's, let's be fair, most of them are very good at what they do. We don't expect them to be cybersecurity specialists because they run a small business they're working long hours. Uh, and so the big thing is how do we make it easy for them to consume security? Um, and that's always been the challenge. Um, uh, how, do you get, you know, how do you give someone industrial level security uh, at an SME simplicity of using? And you know, Raj, this is where, you know, we've all talked cloud for enterprises, but this is where the cloud, I think, uh, and going online you know, offers some huge benefits because you can take away that complexity. You know, if you think of the fact that if uh, you, know, you take, um, you know, for example, Airtel in India, one of our uh, big partners over there, uh, yes, they work with a lot of larger organizations, but they also work you know, right down to the smallest mobile customer in the farthest reaches and, uh, of India. Um, yeah, they're, they're building a service with us at the moment around data protection. Uh, now, a lot of that will be at larger companies, but quite frankly, there's nothing to say that smaller companies can't consume that in a hosted environment where all of the records, rather than being on a few laptops in a network uh, in the factory or the office, are suddenly now just connecting to cloud services for their customer records, for their financial records, and for their security services. Uh, and I think that, that little bit of uh, fear factor, that a lot of companies saying, well, if I let go of it, I don't have it anymore. But the reality is going to a cloud service, whether it's for your business applications or whether it's for uh, your security, is far easier and far safer than trying to manage yourself. Um, and because they're backing up, they're managing it, they're providing the security around it. Uh, and so I think there's a huge role for the service provider, um, pro um, providers across India, and even globally, you know, to offer these at a appropriate level rather than the full enterprise. Take away so many of the complexities um, that you need and, and offer the equivalent of an antivirus um, type of product. Now, we shouldn't say antivirus itself, but the simplicity of antivirus, but for a lot of, uh, a lot of the uh, um, you know, data protection, user protection, et cetera. Yeah. So finally, I mean, before we conclude, uh, one of the areas where pretty much all MSMEs or SMEs in India are, uh, uh, are now talking, they are talking about digital transformation. So that digital transformation is something which SME, SMEs need to get to because till now they were operating in a, in a small environment. I mean, that's all they had, that this was their world. And today they suddenly realize that if they keep the world limited, their profits are limited, their growth is limited. So they need to go beyond. So what would be, as, a, as an expert, you've, you've been with, uh, by the way, Bjorn has been with uh, uh, this field for many, many years. So he came into Force Point only just about a year back. So before that, he has long years of experience. So from that, Bjorn, I mean, I'm talking to you as Bjorn, the expert on data and uh, the internet itself. So what would be your suggestion? What should a, a small enterprise uh, who probably just has a few laptops, maybe have 50 people working for in the in the in the office. What should that person's digital transformation journey be like? Just three, four steps that you would be you would suggest as an expert. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're, you're right, and uh, I've I've seen the uh, yeah, the huge opportunities uh, for companies to 
to expand. Everyone kind of looks at COVID as providing a huge negative and dampener, but it, uh, you've also seen some really innovative things. And even just locally where I live, there's a cheese company. They've started selling cheese therapy and shipping Australia wide. They were a small cheese shop. <clears throat> now they're dealing with all of Australia, sending out yeah. packages of cheese and dealing with customers. And in their own way, that's digital transformation where they've suddenly automated a lot of their systems, but now they've created uh, these customizable online services where you can choose different things, subscribe to it, uh, et cetera. So <clears throat> as, as I look at any company making the journey to uh, digital systems and even new digital channels of how they sell and deal with customers, a few things that are always critical that we talk about. First one, understand the information that's important in your business. Uh, what is it that uh, keeps your business running? Uh, and it's not the machinery that makes your uh, your door handles that you shared or uh, you know your uh, you know things. It's the secret recipes. It's the secrets that you have that runs your business uh, out there. So know what that information is. Know where it is, and who should have access to it. Um, build some security uh, around that, and uh, work with a service provider to say, I want to know when that's if that's someone's trying to take it off my PC. You know, just, you know, antivirus is great from stopping viruses, but uh, getting onto your laptop, but they will eventually, uh, someone will put a thumb drive into your machine. What antivirus won't do is tell you when somebody has, is on your system, has hacked in and trying to copy that out. Um, the three goals, you know, the, the incursion, the exit, you know, the search for information, the exfiltration. And, and so, knowing that when somebody is trying to take information off your system and whilst that sounds complicated it can be actually really really simple when offered by a service provider uh, and then i'd say um, that's step one understand information step two um, secure your access into uh, your devices um, and so rather than just saying that uh, anybody you, you can just dial up you know, in the old days we'd say dial up over a telephone but now people say, well, I've got remote access set up. You know, remote access is nice, but it's not secure. So look at some of the uh, broader, um, you know, whether it's the CASB solutions like accessing cloud services or whether it's private access. Again, service providers love providing this because the access from where you are remote to your computing, even in a small office, is across a network. And so the service providers love that because it's a value add for the network. Um, and then the last piece I, I'd look at is protecting the user interactions. Um, every small business gets email in, every small business probably uses the web to research customers or do or do other things, if it's not even maybe just surfing Facebook during lunch hours or something. Yeah. Those interactions cause risk as well uh, for organizations. And we did talk antivirus. Yes, endpoint protection is critical. You know, we don't provide that here at Forcepoint, but there are many great players out there who provide that. So if you really look at knowing your data, knowing where it is, working with a service provider to secure it, to looking at the, you know, the interactions that are happening uh, online, and then third, making sure that whenever you access your computing resources, it's done in a secure way, uh, not just the quickest, easiest way uh, across there. Finally, uh, Bjorn, just, just uh, before I end, I just want to ask you one simple question. As an MSME owner, imagine I'm an MSME, uh, what would you say should be the percentage of my annual budget that I should be setting aside for cybersecurity at this point? I mean, a ballpark figure. Obviously, it differs from industry to industry. Hmm. Imagine that I'm starting. Let me say I'm that cheese shop. Or, I mean, in India, I'm that samosa shop. Hmm. So, uh, I mean, I'm selling in the local area and then suddenly I'm packing it and sending it across the country. So... What yeah, I um, look. I, I would find it hard to put a percentage uh, on the spend, but I think yeah, what you should be doing if you're an SME, you should be working with service providers and looking at this on a consumption-based model. Um, mm. and, and again, we went back to what are the, some of the the reasons people don't yeah. want to do things because it's too hard, too expensive, and a big cash flow issue yeah. up front. Uh, <clears throat> and so if you can, and most service providers love to bill by the month, bill by, yeah, and India's brilliant in that everything's a sachet, right? You yeah. can go walk down the street, you can buy a sachet. So if you've used an analogy, you can buy one sachet instead of shampoo of data protection, one sachet per month of this, it becomes a, a lot more palatable and easier to consume and understand. 
both the cost uh, and the benefit that you're getting from rather than a huge investment because nobody wants to buy the, the whole infrastructure up front uh, and then hope it works. Um, uh, and the benefit of buying it in that consumption-based model is that the service providers are always updating it and keeping it current. Um, and look, it, it ultimately, the things we're talking about should be you know, fractions of the cost of uh, uh, um, building it yourself, but also of uh, you know, the potential losses out there as well. Um, so I, I'd definitely be using service providers, consumption-based models, um, that allows you to judge and balance your cash flows because I know understand how important cash flows are for SMEs. Yeah, yeah. terrific. The sachet model sounds very interesting. I, I, I must say, I think we started off with the mask and we ended with the sachet. So <laughs> thanks a lot, uh, Bjorn. Thanks. Uh, that was yeah. really wonderful. I'm sure people watching would uh, at least stop having the fear that they need to put all their money into cybersecurity. They don't. Yeah. Uh, it's just a sachet. I think I'll just use that word. That's a brilliant word. Uh, I think it uh, makes a lot of sense. Thanks once again, Bjorn. Have a, have a great day and uh, look to see you soon. And uh, all the best for the India-Australia match. Yes, thanks, Raj. There's time. only one outcome. There's only one outcome. Yeah, I know. I think so. <laughs> we, we, we'll leave that to our imagination, I think. Right? <laughs> thank thanks, you. Thanks, Bjorn. Thanks a lot for joining. And uh, thank you very much once again. Have a great day and have a good Christmas and season greetings for you and family. See you soon. Yeah.